Hello YouTube, it's Tony. So today I'll show you a 1 to 99 120 agility guide for 2019. What I'll show you are the fast and somewhat less click intensive methods. Do note that these XP rates might be a little bit off since they're kind of rough estimates. Here are the basics of agility training. There are a lot of agility shortcuts in RuneScape. However, the fundamental way of training agility is by completing entire laps of agility courses. Every agility course has various obstacles you have to go through. By completing all the obstacles in the correct order in a cycle, it will give you a huge agility XP drop in the end. Now failing obstacles will damage you, so you're going to have to redo the obstacle again in order to receive the lap bonus. Ideally, it's best not to wear anything heavy, or better yet, weight reduction gear can kind of help. Here are the XP multipliers. You can get agility bonus XP by playing Barbarian Assault Hard Mode. You'll get 700k bonus XP per hour from doing this. Now I know this minigame is a little hard to learn, but I do have a guide on all 4 roles and I will leave the link in the description. It's also a good skill to train on double XP weekend, especially if you're using Silverhawk Feathers. There are more XP multipliers to list, but these are the most common ones in the game. Moving on, we have the useful items. First is the Nimble Outfit. You'll get 6% more agility XP by wearing the entire set. This is a reward from the Pit D&D, or there is a chance of winning this from Treasure Hunter. In order to access the Pit D&D, a talent scout will randomly call you when you complete an agility course. Then if you talk to him, he'll knock you out and teleport you to the pit. Every time you complete the pit, there's a 1 in 3 chance to get a piece. I'm not going to show you in this video how to do the pit here, as I do have a strategy guide and I'll leave the link in the description. Next up, we have the Silverhawk Boots. This is obtained for free from the Oddman store. If you own the Nimble Boots, it will retain the 1% agility XP. Now Silverhawk Feathers are used to charge the boots. There are many ways you can obtain this, although Silverhawk Feathers itself is tradable. There are 3 actions in the game that will grant you agility XP from Silverhawks, but it will burn a charge every single time. The amount of XP you'll get is equal to 10% of a small XP lamp. What's also amazing is that they do work with bonus XP plus other XP boosts. Next up, we have the Collector's Insignia. This is a reward from Barbarian Assault. You have to kill Penance King 5 times plus have level 5 Collector roll. This will cost you 500 Collector points. You'll get plus 5% agility XP for completing laps, or 10% if it's fully charged. So we have the Stamina Potion, and that is an untradeable potion released recently. It requires 77 herb lore, and this will give you 6 agility levels. Here's a fun fact, it was released 5 years ago on Old School RuneScape. Toadflax Instant Sticks. It requires 36 fire making in order to use. It will decrease the chance of failing agility obstacles by up to 50% less. You can burn 6 instant sticks at once in order to get potency level 4. Unfortunately, if you die with these sticks, you will lose the entire effect, so you gotta be very careful using this. Finally, we have the Surefooted Aura. This will cost you loyalty points. It makes it so that it completely prevents failure on an agility course. Tier 1 Aura lasts 20 minutes, while a Tier 2 lasts 40 minutes. I've talked about the useful items, so let's get into the training methods. First, I will start with the early agility quests. You'll get 39 agility by completing these 3 quests, the tourist trap, the grand tree, and finally evil Dave's big day out. Because agility is really hard at first especially, I strongly recommend you complete these quests. I know a lot of you might be thinking, whoa, not everyone likes doing quests. Regular training methods. From level 1 to 18, you'll do the Gnome Stronghold Agility course. It is located in the Tree Gnome Stronghold as marked on the minimap. If you don't know how to get there, it is northwest of RD. This course is very simple, so just follow the arrows and pretty much traverse the obstacles. Unlike many other agility courses, you cannot fail obstacles on this course. In total, you'll get 86.5 agility XP for completing an entire lap. To get to level 18, it should take you around 30 minutes. From level 18 to 30, you'll do the Watchtower shortcut. Somewhere in the middle of the town there's a shortcut to get out, so just climb underneath. When you're near the Watchtower, climb the trellis on the outer wall, then climb back down the ladder and repeat the same process. There's no chance of filling when you're climbing the trellis. Every time you climb this, you'll get 31 agility XP. 
From 30 to 52, you'll do the penguin suits. This requires the Cold War quest complete, and I highly suggest you bring at least 8 penguin suits. You should know how to make these penguin suits since you had to make one for the quest itself. The best place to deploy them is on the top floor of White Knight's castle on the east side. While this next part's hard to explain, but it is very important. You want to keybind a clockwork suit that you didn't wind, plus a winded clockwork suit. They're actually two different items. If there's no release option, that means the clockwork isn't winded. You'll now press and hold both of these keybinds. What you're going to do next is pick up these clockwork suits. Ideally, angle your camera so that you can click your character square and it will automatically pick them up without having to move your mouse. This method might be very click intensive, but you could do this with your eyes closed. So yeah, you can use mouse keys if you want, but I don't personally use that. You can get around 35k to 40k XP per hour from doing this. I have a 6 minute footage of this, and I will leave the link in the description. Alternatively, from level 30 to 52, you can do the low level section of the Anachronia Agility course. You can sail the Anachronia from the dig site boat, which I marked on the mini-map. I'm not going to demonstrate how to walk to Anachronia as this takes around 5 minutes. However, luckily for you, I do have a base camp guide which will show you how to get to Anachronia. You'll traverse these obstacles and only within section G. This section is located north of the lodestone. When you've crossed the routes after the cave section, you want to go backwards. Failing an obstacle within this agility course will not make you redo the obstacle, although you will still get damaged. So on release day, this method was extremely overpowered at low levels, but it has since been nerfed. You can still get around 30k XP per hour even after the nerf. When you compare this to Penguin Suit method, it is somewhat less click intensive. You might be asking me, would an Ape Atoll and Barbarian Outpost be better XP per hour than this? Well, the Ape Atoll at this level is only 25k XP per hour, while the Barbarian Outpost is only 15k. From 52 onwards, you'll do the Wilderness Agility course. By coincidence, it's located in the level 52 Wilderness. You can use the Ancient Obelisk to get there from the level 44 Wilderness, or go from the Mage Arena Bank. In order to enter the course, you have to open the gate. As you can see right here, this agility course is very short. There are only 4 obstacles. Failure rates might be pretty low, but every single time you fail, you have to climb up the ladder and redo this obstacle. I suggest you bring a Demonic Skull which you can buy this from the Zamrak Mage. For every level after 50, you will get 4% more agility XP from this course. At level 75, you'll get double the XP, and then at level 99, almost 3 times the XP. However, you will be attacked by anyone regardless of your combat level, so you gotta keep that in mind. By having Wilderness Sword 2, you'll get another 5% more agility XP from this course. While PKers don't show up very often, but you still gotta watch out for them anyways. Make sure you do not bring anything that you're not willing to lose. When you see a PKer, you wanna make sure you anticipate and freedom in order to avoid stuns. When you're traversing between the pipe or the hill, there is a chance of getting out of combat stance, so just lobby immediately afterwards. Now the XP rates depend on your agility level. At level 52, you'll get 45k agility XP per hour, then at 65, 80k XP per hour, at 75, 110k XP per hour, and finally 150k XP per hour at level 99. So from level 65 to 75, you'll do the Empty Throne Room. This is located near the dig site. After you enter the room, head east and go north until you see the bikes. You will constantly get agility XP by hopping on any bike. However, if you want optimal XP, hop onto the glowing empowered bike. Because the empowered bike will change pretty often, you're gonna have to switch bikes. This method is somewhat AFK depending on whether you want to switch bikes or just camp a single bike. You can get 60 to 65k XP per hour from doing this. From 77 onwards, you'll do the Heffen Agility course. This requires Plague's End quest complete, and is located in the Heffen Clan on the west side. You cannot fail any obstacle that you traverse on this course. You see this velocity meter on the top of your screen, right? This will fill up every time you traverse an obstacle, and when it's full, it will drain back to zero, so that way you can automatically traverse your next obstacle. To finish one lap of this course, just merge with the light creature. Once in a while you will see a shortcut within this course, and so there's a green message that says this. 
Taking this shortcut will allow you to complete the course faster, thus giving you more XP per hour. Having perfect Juju Agility Potions or the Perfect Plus Potions will actually increase the frequency on the shortcuts within this course. If there's a Heaven Voices Saren, you'll get 20% more Agility XP, plus every obstacle will give you a small amount of per XP. The XP you get is level scaled, and every 5 levels will increase. At level 77, you'll get 70k XP per hour, and then at level 97 or higher, 140k XP per hour, and this is all without the Voices Saren. There is a way to one-click the Heaven course without moving your mouse. In order to set this up, this is what you do. When you're on the obstacle right before the zipper line, make sure you zoom all the way out and make your compass face directly north. You'll now turn your angle camera, so this way you can click near the left shoulder on the back side of your character. At this point, do not move your cursor. If the cursor doesn't let you click the light creature, just adjust the camera angle accordingly, but also do not zoom in. At this point, if you hover your cursor after every single obstacle, it will allow you to click this without having to move your cursor anymore. I'm not sure whether this works for everyone, but I did this with the default interface settings and it did work. Preferably use a screen marker so that way you can keep track of the cursor location. Doing the one-click method, you can get around 110k agility XP per hour, and this is from level 97 onwards. From level 85, you will do the full Anachronia Agility course. I'm not going to show you a full demonstration, as I do have a guide on this, and I will leave the link in the description. It's a pretty tough course to do, and it does take a while to learn, so please be patient. If you can complete this course within 7 minutes, you can get around 180k base Agility XP per hour. However, if you're really good with positioning the surges and bladed dives, you can get around 5.5 to 6 minute times. That means it's faster than the Wilderness and the Heaven Agility course. However, obviously it's more click intensive, and not to mention that you gotta memorize the navigation. Also, because this gives you double search codex pages, you will make money from doing this. From level 83 onwards, you can do Charming Moths instead. This also requires 88 Hunter. It is located in the east coast of the level 30 Wilderness. Ever since the Hunter rework, this method's nearly full AFK because you can catch these butterflies automatically. It's also pretty decent for summoning charms. Recently, this place has become a lot more populated, so you're gonna have to watch out for PKers. You'll get 650k Hunter plus 100k Agility XP per hour. I do have a full guide on this, and I'll leave the link in the description. So the next method we have is a Silverhawk method. Once again, you can claim these Silverhawk boots for free by going to the Oddman store. Of course, you have to charge them with feathers. Training skills while you're wearing these boots will grant you Agility XP. Essentially, it means that you can train Agility XP without ever having to train the skill itself. The best choices to use Silverhawks would be bank standing skills like crafting, fire making, herb lore, cooking, and stuff like that basically. Now Silverhawks might be expensive, but it is pretty affordable at high levels. Nowadays, this has kind of become a mainstream method, since it's pretty ideal to make enough money and then passively get agility XP while you're training other skills at the same time. As of late however, Charming Moths is free so you could probably do that instead. You can burn up to 80 Silverhawk Feathers per hour, which is equal to 68.8k base XP per hour passively. If you're training Silverhawks in combat, then you'll only burn 50 Feathers per hour. Here are the calculations for Silverhawks. This is for level 75, 99, 120, and 200ml agility XP. Okay, so they look pretty expensive on paper, but you don't have to pay this all at once. In order to reach your goal for agility, it's definitely going to take you several several hours of skilling. I've also listed this without bonus XP, since I can't assume everyone wants to play Barbarian Assault Hard Mode. If you do have bonus XP, then it's half the amount needed. You're most likely going to use a lot of XP boost while you're training production skills anyway, so the cost is definitely going to be cheaper than listed. Here is the 99 plus section. We have the agility cape, and that means you no longer fail any agility obstacles. By talking to the talent scout while you're wearing this cape, you will get unlimited teleports to the pit. There are a couple of different methods after level 99. Some are better than others for various reasons, so yeah, just choose which method's right for you. I've talked about the regular methods, so let's get into the other training methods. First, we have Gobi Bands. 
While it's similar to Warbands, but this time it is a safe PvP activity. You'll get up to 48.5k agility XP for free every day, and this should take 3 minutes. There's an FC that tracks which world has which skill, and this is called Mini Games. Now, I do have a full guide for this, and I will leave the link in the description. After that, we have the Circus Weekly D&D. There are no requirements for this. The location will change every week, so just see the RS Wiki for the current location. So you'll go to the ticket vendor and then hit change on the agility room. There are various tasks you can perform. Ideally, it's best to perform the task that you did not checkbox, as shown right on the top of the screen. It's best to prioritize the lower level tasks at lower levels, and the higher level tasks at the higher levels. You'll get a total of 10 tries, and the failure rate is based on the agility level requirement plus the player's agility level. So when you're done the D&D, you can tear the ticket to leave this place. Serenity Posts. It requires Plague's End, and it's located near the Heaven Agility Course. You'll constantly get agility XP, and there are 4 possible stances. You'll get the maximum XP by being on the correct stance. There's an elf in the middle, and he or she will call which is the current best stance. I mean, some people like to AFK this instead. You can get up to 20k base XP agility per day before you have to step off. The next method we have are the agility training dummies. You can obtain this from the skilling dummy crates which are from Treasure Hunter. So you deploy them and practice agility on them. So each dummy has 5 charges and you'll get 3846 XP each at level 99 agility per charge. You have to click the dummy again after every XP drop. I mean, this method isn't very click intensive. You can burn 40 dummies in an hour, which is equal to 650k base agility XP per hour. Bonuses and double XP we can do work here, but unfortunately Silverhawk Feathers do not trigger. And finally, the last method we have are the agility brawling gloves. You'll get 4 times the agility XP in the wilderness, or outside the wilderness 1.5 times. This is best used with agility dummies outside the wilderness. Alternatively, you can do this in the Wilderness Agility course. So this wraps up my Agility guide. With that being said, I wish you best of luck training Agility as this is arguably the worst skill to train in RuneScape. So yeah, thanks for watching and I hope it helps. If I missed anything, feel free to ask. Also, be sure to subscribe if you haven't done so already because I'll definitely do more 1-99 or 120 guides in the future.